Oh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the gift of the new day. We want to thank you that you've protected us and brought us here safely. But for the as we're going to have this meeting, we ask you to be amidst us. Whatever we are doing, Lord Father, take control, take the wheel. We will be able to have a productive meeting and understand each other. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Amen. 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 She Loves Me is an interesting story because it takes us back to the time when people used to write like letters, love letters to each other. And it, it takes us back to a time when you had to actually like do the work before you actually entered a relationship, like the courting part and getting to know each other and actually thinking about someone character and their personality and who they are before judging their appearance which is a stark contrast to like how we find love these days it's it's a beautiful story of of love but like love that is earned and not just love that is surface um the audition process is so interesting so yes we put a call out um telling people you know it's a musical you're auditioning for so you have to come with a monologue a song and a dance and because, you know, people don't really audition for musicals, a lot of Ugandans are used to one discipline or at most two, where they can sing and act, or they can dance and act, or they can dance and sing, but they can't act. And, you know, they, 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 they rarely ha master all the three disciplines that are needed to do a musical. So it was so interesting because some people came and said, all together said, I don't know how to do a monologue, but I've come. Um, and some people came and were like, I don't know any musical songs because we asked for musicals. And they're like, I don't know any songs for musicals, but I'm just going to sing Rihanna or sing Sam Smith. <laughs> and I found that so interesting because what I liked from it is what the dedication to come. You know, they, they took a chance. They said, you know what, regardless, I'm going to come. Whatever happens, happens. If, if I go through, I go through. If I don't, at least I've learned something. The cast comprises of there were 20, but now there are 19 cast members. It used to be split equal, equal, but I think the men are trumping the ladies. So we have 19 cast members. We're fortunate to have a Ugandan celebrity musician, Kenneth Mugabe, part of us. And it's his debut, sort of, for musical theater. And it's really lovely to have him, his musical expertise, and now also seeing his character development has been a great plus. We have Tayo Shonubi, who was the Yonsei Theatre Musical Theatre instructor. And if history does me right, the musical theatre class was the first of its kind in Uganda. So it's such a great joy to have Tayo part of the cast and also as the former instructor at Yenze and if you hear her voice it just makes you think you're in a forest with very many birds <laughs> singing and of course we have George Novak who is also doubling as our dance director. George Novak is the character name his real name is Andrew Amanure. He's acting and he's the dance director. He's a prolific dance director in Uganda so that's our main cast amongst others. All of them are talented theatre practitioners in different aspects, whether it's dance or music or acting or even things that are behind the stage like set design or um, a costume. But we have so much talent in Uganda, so you find people overlapping in roles. This is my first uh, musical I'm doing. Um, I was part of a musical, but as a dance director. Um, so this is the first one I am acting, so this is basically my debut. As Andrew, I've been dancing for close to 11 years now. And now I have to sing and act. I've never sung, of course, apart from when I'm singing in the bathroom or when we're singing praise and worship in church. Like, that's the most singing I've done. But it's also like, really good that I'm adding that to the things that I do. Um, and on top of that, I'm also adding acting and learning all these very many things about characters and being on stage because even as a dancer 
um, we just go on stage and perform and we don't really portray messages and characters and all these things. But one of the things that I do to get into George is one, think less because I am a thinker. I like being in my head a lot. Um, but George is someone who almost speaks without thinking. Like it just speaks out of impulse. And then posture. I think about how I'm walking, how I'm sitting, where my hands are. Because as, as Andrew, I am a very still person. I don't like move a lot when I'm like walking and stuff. But I like to get out of that place, I have to like figure out what not to do as Andrew. So if I am stiff as George, I have to be a bit bigger. And also the thing about theatre is it's about big movements, about being big and huge, which I don't do unless I'm dancing. So like all those small things add to the switch between Andrew and George. Um, and that's how I like switch between the two. Fun fact, um, this is my very, very first time doing theatre in actual sense. Though I, um, in film, I, I, I did a movie that was a little bit of a musical up in there, so I wouldn't say it's my first time, though in theatre it's literally my first time. I must say the very first time I came around, um, this shy guy, more, more of a loner, really. Yeah, so I came here and I was all by myself, but then as time has gone on, I've realised that there are good people. Yeah, there's a way they make you feel welcome. Yeah, it is far different from the time I came and right now we connect so much. The chemistry is really strong and I credit them because they're talented. They're just so amazing. Like they make you feel like you can do it. Even when you feel like, God, I, I, I just don't think today it's working. I mean, they don't let you down. So at the end of the day, they're amazing people. Even off rehearsal of the show, they are nice people. Yeah. And talk about the directors. Ah, they're amazing. They're amazing. I wouldn't have asked for better. Yeah. I love the cast. I love the directors. So it's just amazing. Man, it's hard to choose a favorite line. It's not one line. Like even his song, I'm laughing throughout his song with the way the, the, the person that wrote this was amazing because Sipo says lines even when Anyone is saying them, doesn't have to be the person acting as Sipos. There is a weight they carry and it's quite interesting. I, I have to say I, I love his song, and mo his song and most of my favorite lines are in his song. There are some hard challenges like you come with your lines you read through the night, then you come this day and then the most parts you read you, you, can't, you can't even remember a thing and they're all even if you keep pushing, you remember the very last dialogue in the script. So it's, it, those, those are challenges. But then you look around and your core actor is, is like giving you that energy. The people down there are also giving you that energy. So forget the challenges. And just say, so I have that feeling that I'm very much supported uh, in these rehearsals. So for me, what I, I first do is, is to forget myself as a person but then when i start when i start to 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 i start to to, to to go through this character knowing his wants needs what he doesn't want then i start to find myself in there or i start to find some people i know in the real world inside that man and then i'll start to get those things from the real world and then put them together and then come up with a with a guy a different person because i don't want to to be the same like you've said you've you've done a really like they're very different segwood i want him to stay there in the wings and then i will bring a sipos on that on the stage we have the best directors um aganza and simeon um aganza is the anchor of this entire thing and then Simeon is fantastic and it's so cool seeing him direct because he was actually my student last year so I was teaching him and now the roles are reversed and he's just so such a good leader and um, he also makes it really fun and he helps us to understand that this is work 
but also to not take ourselves too seriously and to not be too hard on ourselves if we feel like we haven't done that great. Today's workshop, I have to say, is, was different because it was like performing for everyone. Usually you are on a one-on-one -on -one session with the music director, but today you are doing the work that you are doing with the director, performing for everyone else while not doing the blocking that you usually do. Sometimes you can hide within the blocking, but here it was, we have to see the emotions on your face. We have to hear and feel what you're communicating with your face without using your hands and walking around. So yeah, it was uh, different, but cool, I guess. The cast is a bunch of very interesting people. So I don't know if many people know this, but a lot of directing has to do with dealing with people, understanding people, how to navigate um, their pros and cons, the things that they are strong at and the things that they're weak at, and also finding ways to draw the strengths out of them and allowing them to be themselves in all that. And I find that the cast is really interesting because they're all from different walks of life. They, they did not know each other. A lot of them did not know each other before they came. And I've loved to see how they've sort of gained camaraderie, how they now support each other. They now, you know, spend more time with each other. They have become friends. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to see. And it makes it easier for me as an assistant director because then I'm working with a team. I'm not working with individuals. Well, <laughs> We cast according to looks as, as well. You want, for instance, this is a romantic comedy. You want a couple that looks like they could ideally be together. But also uh, you cast according to voice range. So someone might look the part, but they might have the wrong voice range for the role. Uh, when casting, we always encourage actors to not take it personally because it's we're not rejecting you, we're just trying to fit certain specifics of the role, whether you're singing up to a G sharp or a B flat. We're looking for something, whether it's your voice, how you move. Now, for Andrew, his role is unique because his character doesn't dance and he's a dancer. And it's been interesting to see him push his boundaries. And I think he has done that quite well. Um, it's easier to take someone out of what they know than nurture them into what they don't know. So you, you make your work easy for yourself as a director. There's always that point in rehearsals where you want the cast to own the production as much as you do. There's only so much you can push adults. Um, but it's the director's job to get mad. It's the direct producer's and director's job to say, hey guys, style up. It's, it's your job. And my personality hates confrontation. I, I don't want to get into people's business, but in order to execute something well, sometimes you have to be the tough one or the bad one. And so you, you leave meetings with sponsors who are expecting a great show. Um, you're talking to audience members who are expecting a great show. And then you come for a rehearsal and the cast are like, maybe we will rehearse, maybe we won't. Um, and so the whole rant started with, we have a WhatsApp group where the stage manager puts the call sheet and all you need to do is say, I've seen the call sheet noted. That's all you need to do. It's, it's as simple as just putting a thumbs up. <laughs> and previously we'd had in a cast of 20 people, one person puts their hands up, two people put their hand up and I, I lost my top because why, <laughs> just why? Why are we here? What are we doing? There's always that rant and you see reels on Instagram of the director like, who are you? <laughs> what do you live for? <laughs> and I had to give it, it was my turn <laughs> to give that rant about why are you alive? <laughs> do you want this? Do you know why you're doing this? Cause it can't be my dream. Always do your best and, and do your best for yourselves so if you watch the runs after the rant 
um, people started performing for themselves and we had fun with ourselves as cast. We'd, we can watch our own show over and over again, regardless of audience. One thing she doesn't stand for is getting lazy and slacking off. And like people said slacking off, right? To the point of they were not responding to the stage manager's messages, right? Um, one, it shocked me that she sent the rant because I was like, um, is, is she okay? Why, why is she, what happened? Um, but then at the end of the day, she was just like, she was just like pushing for um, professionalism, right? Um, because you can't, you can't be, you can't have signed a contract and say you're going to do this show, but then how you're acting around the show is not really showing professionalism. And I, th I think she had kept it for a while because she doesn't just bust out. So when she did the rant as like, I think it got to her. That ranting, anyone, in, anyone leading people, basically. Uh, trust me, one day, one time, you'll have to rant, whether you want it or not. If you're leading people, human beings, because human beings are totally different. Everyone has a different background. Everyone has um, their mannerisms, or what, where they learned it from. You see, charity begins at home. So everyone comes with their charity. They learn from their home. And charity begins at home and, and, and it shouldn't end there. Oh, it usually never ends there. Who pissed her off or something like that, yeah? And then I go to check out whatever she was writing about in as a part of the culprits. Oh my God, damn, I am dead. Yeah, but um, it, it, it got me thinking and uh, I realized that teamwork doesn't end in rehearsal. It also goes down to where we stay and uh, even off rehearsal, yeah? We need to look out for each other. We need to do these small things. So at the end of the day, it spoke out to us. I believe it kind of changed the way we see things. I love working with small groups. I've worked with the cast of My Fair Lady. I've worked with the cast of Merchant of Venice. I've worked with the cast of Red Hills, the cast big casts, I've worked with big casts. And this one is, it's not too big, it's not too small, 19 cast members, but I think my ideal cast size is about eight, um, five to eight members, because then you have a personal relationship with every single one. Even in this one I do, but I think work can go faster when the group is smaller. Because we had such a big cast and we had a, such a big set, we have had to rehearse for about six months to seven months. And that takes time because not everyone is growing at the exact same pace. So the more time, the better. And that's a very short time compared to what is abroad. Abroad, they do it for about a year. Um, so when it's a bigger cast, it just means you have to get to know everyone's personalities and, and types and then figure out how to direct that to make it one cohesive team. It's a little bit more challenging. I taught them the way I would teach classrooms, the way I would teach kids. I'm a music educator and I, I, teach, I teach kids usually anywhere from age three, like that's teaching kindergarten classes. Yeah, so I found that adults are just, they're, they're not different, they, they don't need they don't need you to make the, the process complicated. Our brains are really the same. We still need the simplicity of how children learn. And we also like the fun, especially here in Uganda. Uh, our, our classroom experience is, is, is usually not that much fun. It's usually someone telling you what to do and then you do it. So yeah, this, this was different. And, and I think that I personally need to have fun. So. <laughs> I find that it works for me, so I figured they, they needed the same process here. Yeah. The cast is, is amazing. I mean, they relate with me entirely. I can ask, they, what are you doing? They're like, man, see, what are man? They say, oh, Jesus, you can juicy, you know, a glass of water, or, you know, a banana. You know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm wet, intolerant. Me, I'm... <laughs> You know, I, and I get to, to, to experience the divineness of our beautiful cast. And, and it's, it's beautiful. In fact, me, I love it. I don't know about the rest, but me, I love it, yes. The production team is a group of very interesting people because we're all artists at the end of the day. We, when when we, we've acted 
together and being on different productions together at some to some extent so having that knowledge of the art and of being the actor we we sort of have a general understanding of what we want you know it's not a very corporate our meetings are not very corporate they're very creative meetings where we can throw ideas to each other and there's no wrong answer there's no wrong idea there's no bad idea we sort of just allow ourselves to create and i think because of that we don't have like the pressures that most people in the corporate sort of pro a production team in, in a, with a corporate sort of working method would have we have a more flexible creative method kenneth kanabia set designer was a godsend uh, it's his first time working at this magnitude in the industry. He came from a church background. I had also never known him. Um, but I think why it's, he has been so beneficial to the team is because he loves excellence in himself. He wants to do a great job. Secondly, he's coming from an architectural and scientific background. So when we're discussing sizes and widths and all of that, he's giving me actual dimensions that I can understand. He's showing me drawings on his laptop. He's showing me a blueprint. He made a demo for us and, and he kept a, a weekly report of everything that was happening. So as a producer director, I was able to willingly give him the funds to do the project rather than just base it off promises and things I've never seen. So the director of Yenzu Theatre Conservatory reached out with a, with a brief of, of how they want the set to look like. And we had to sit down and analyze and break down uh, the concept into a design. Uh, it's like a scheme design that we were trying to study. And we studied different things and, up, uh, and the application in the local context because the set, She Loves Me set was done in different parts around the world. In Europe, it was done before. And this is the first time for it to be done locally here in Uganda. So we had to localize the set within the local materials that we have here to try to bring out something that matches the global audience. Okay, now, when you look at uh, the design itself, we've used my steel all the sections of mild steel to come up with a structure. Why? Uh, one, it is it is easy construction. It can be put up so easily. Two, it is very light since it's hollow. It is really easy for us to manipulate into different forms. Very easy to deconstruct and construct into different forms. Our stage has the core structure, that is the steel structure. Two, it has it has it, we cladded it with plywood. Three application of the painting and the finishing and the beauty and the aesthetics. What do I mean by complete, the level of complexity? You see, uh, most of the stages that we have worked on, or personally I've worked on, um, we build them on stage. Like, for example, in the church, they say it's now time to set up the Christmas production. Like few, few days a week to Christmas production, they, they give you the, the stage and you build from Monday, uh, maybe up to Saturday, you build the stage. So the, 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 when people come to, to play and it, the actors come to, 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 to interact with the stage, they find it when it's already done. But now in the context of She Loves Me stage, uh, set, we are doing it from, you're not doing it at the stage at the National Theater, no, no, no. We are assembling it and uh, making it work outside the theater. That involves uh, very many things. One, you have to think about the method, the methodologies of transporting it to, 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 to the stage. And also you have to think about on the technology, or the technology to allow you to be able to assemble it and deassemble it. So that one we managed to pull it off too. Um, the set itself involves different mechanisms. For example, there are scenes, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a part of a play where we start when the entire set is just one together, it is, it is closed together, and then, then it has to open, you know, and then it has to rotate at some points. So um, having such a brief, we managed to um, answer it 
with a, with a, a deconstructible light structure that can be uh, movable so easily. That's why we have all these panels, they're movable, whereby we make the panels independently, we transport them uh, to the theater for testing. And after testing, we, we have to deassemble them and then bring them back to the workshop. So it has been like that. It was the 4th, June. We went to try to do a set test. <laughs> Brother man's set test. So National Theater has just had the first set test in their life. They have never seen anyone bring a set for tryouts and be like, oh, this is how it's going to be. And this is like a month and a half to the project. So it's their first time. Most of them, most of the administrators, all of them, in fact, we had the guys, the likes of Okware, Kanya, even like the big man himself, Andrew, he had never seen that. You know, we had some legendaries coming in, also Sima and whatnot, Mukalazi. They came in and then they were like, what is going on? And this guy is preparing for a show. We were like, no, we're trying out the set to see how it would look like. And they had never seen this in their lives. So kudos to YMZ, the Yenzenians that are running this. Kudos to me. <laughs> you know, um, Gaza Ubia and, and all those guys that are in the brackets that we can't reveal or see. Kudos to you guys. Um, the first time we saw the set was here at the National Theater. And we had a test run just to see if it fit the stage, a nine meter by nine stage. Um, is this what we're actually going for? And it was shocking. It felt dangerous. It felt like, oh my gosh, we've built an entire house. <laughs> is this correct? But then talking with the production managers here at the National Theatre, they said, this is actually standard. This, we've never seen this before. This is great work. This is what we mean when we mean set design. And it's been so fortunate to have people all at the stage to have that feeling like, yes, this is going to be a good show just by looking at, at the production of the set. Costume was done by Martin Bakene and I had worked with him on My Fair Lady and he did an excellent job with the guy suits there. His company is called Little Red Curious. Um, so as you can see, this, this show showcases five leading males. Uh, the senior male, 60 years old, the family guy, about 45. We have the teenager, we have our um, leading male, George Novak, who is doing the story that we all know about love. And then we have the Casanova play guy, Mr. Kodai. So these five males, they need to look good. It's the 1930s, people dressed up well. And um, Literate Curious focuses on bespoke suits. I just learned that word and they use these fancy things called cravats and canes and Martin is very good at that. It's his first time handling ladies costume but I think he's with the dialogue we've had together and just pushing for that 1930s look. I think we got we got to a breaking ground with that. Yeah. So I, I, I am a very detail-oriented person, personally. So when I'm creating or, or trying to execute a vision, my thing is always, let's build it from the ground up. And so before we even saw the costumes, there was a lot of discussion in what kind of character is this? What kind of personality do they have? Where did they grow up? Where do they shop? what kind of colors are their favorite colors what kind of materials do they like to wear as a character then after building that up we created a mood board where we'd have everything listed down down to the jewelry down to the kind the style and the length of the dress um and whether or not they would even have cleavage or not whether it was um a tight dress or loose dress so all those details were listed down and then now we come to the actor that's going to portray it. We have to consider things like their skin tone, their body shape. We want to make sure that we are 
respecting both the actor and the character. So now if a character needs something body hugging and the 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 actor can't doesn't look the way we want them to look in something body hugging, then we have to troubleshoot. So then the process goes from now we have our character, how do we make our character fit the actor like a glove? How do we make the actor look like this is was meant to be on them and not we are forcing them into this character's outfit. And that goes a lot into understanding what skin tone and what colors go together. Um, you know, usually lighter skin people do more pastel colors, very nice, bright, happy colors. And darker skin people go with warmer, warmer colors. And then you have mid-tone and red tone. So there's so much that goes into understanding how to make sure that the actor is respected and looks the part and not just looks like they're wearing someone else's clothes, but looks like they own the clothes that they're wearing as the character. Glam and Poppy, now they're fascinating the whole show for the ladies. Again, found them during My Fair Lady when they dressed me, I was Eliza, and they dressed my headdress for that, very exotic. They made it from scratch. And their work fascinated me because they know the Ugandan um, industry and or, or um, event industry and how to dress for weddings, how to dress for, I don't know, goat races and stuff and elegance and how a lady should wear a hat and everything. What I loved about them is that they make their hats here. They import the materials, but they make their hats here. And Faith at Glam and Poppy is understands theatre so well. She understands that, oh, actors are using things like this. We don't need clips because it's hair involved. We need headbands. Um, when I called her to be part of this, she said, yes, and I am dressing you as well. <laughs> so, yes, our ladies are being given hats. Um, not period specific, but something that will just put us in in the atmosphere of the 1930s and that's all thanks to Glam and Poppy. This is the second musical production uh, that we are privileged to be designing for headwear uh, for the cast and I would say that Ugandans are coming to appreciate the, the beauty, um, the creativity invested in pulling off such a show. And I would love to commend Yenze. I think it's the attention to detail, just like, I think we have shared values. They love fine things, attention to detail, well done. We take pride in our handmade hats and fascinators. Very exquisite and exclusive. What does it mean? We want to look out for the finest fabric, material and we want the fine lines so we don't just put anything on our client's head what you wear on your head is very very important to us and i'm, I'm very privileged to be part of people who are not um, doing anything but they're doing it excellently and i know they pour their hearts out you know when you hear them singing it's with their whole heart even the same it is with the rehearsals so i would say that uh, ugandans are coming to appreciate musical shows and it's um it's growing and we are we really happy to be a part of the journey. I believe it's young and it's starting, but those small steps I believe are going to take us far. Yeah. So you have to make your own news in this place, eh? <laughs> you have to shout for yourself before someone else does. You have to clap for yourself before anyone else does. And the way <laughs> the uh, media works in Uganda, if someone, someone needs to have the first shout. So we're not going to wait for people to shout for us. We were, we were going to blow our horns first. And it was very important for me to control um, what was said about Yenze and what was said about the piece, um, just so that the right information was out there. And once that is done, then, then it's a free ride after that, uh, rather than having conflicting points of view. We also had issues with media saying, oh, I'm going to come and interview the audiences while they're watching the show. And that immediately shows you that there's no understanding of what it, of theatre and the prestige it comes with. Because we're used to events and weddings where you can pull someone aside and, you know, all that les affaires. The attitude, a positive attitude is growing, but it's still a challenge. We've had a lot of people asking, why is it 100K? 
what do I really, what is a student? Can't I buy a student ticket? Um, and it's, I find that disrespectful, honestly, for you to want to pay cheaply for expensive art, um, and yet you're going to go eat out and pay expensively for cheap food. <laughs> um, it's just, it just shows priorities. But I think if we standardize the arts and systemize it, if all the production houses got together and say, this is our price, guys, we're doing good work, we'll pay for it. Because sometimes we, as Ugandans travel, we go to Broadway and we'll pay $100, $1,000 to watch a show on Broadway. Now, this is not Broadway guaranteed, but we're getting there. And you need to do a vote of confidence that 100K, that ticket price is a vote of confidence in the work. In addition to that, we have a team of 80 people of from the designers to the directors, stagehands, ushers, assistants. It's about 80 people who need to sleep and pay rent and eat and all those funds go towards them. You know, there is no there is there is no cutting corners. It's all all going towards these amazing people you want to see on, on stage. So why not contribute to that? So the attitude is shifting, slowly shifting. It's frustrating at times, but I think we just need to be patient with it. And maybe when I have gray hair, it will have changed. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the Ugandan audiences are surprisingly... Um, getting more and, more and more attracted to musicals because musicals is not a new thing in Uganda and it had just died because there was no good, there was no good quality productions coming up or none at all that were musicals. Everything was plays and the plays that were coming up were really good, granted, but the audience that, that, that the older audience that really enjoyed musicals um, are coming back and saying, oh, I'm so glad that musicals are coming back. They're the ones who are calling their people to come and watch. They're the ones who... So I think I'm excited at the fact that the young people are getting inspired by these people who are convincing them to come and saying, oh, the musicals are, are one thing. We used to, I actually learned recently. I hadn't been to musicals back in the day, of course, when, <laughs> when in the early, like late 90s and early 2000s, I hadn't been because I was really a child. But then I, have, I was happy to learn that there were so many musicals that used to happen at the time and there were so many opportunities for people to go and watch these musicals because um, they would happen frequently, that some shows would repeat themselves. So it has been so beautiful to learn from the older people that they're excited that things are coming back and everything is restarting and we're refreshing. And I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed seeing the young people listen to that excitement and be like oh okay so musicals can actually happen in uganda and people are actually asking us what kind of musical is that where can i find it and those are the questions i like and i think that lately the musicals that have been coming up over the past couple of years have inspired people to want to understand more the cast is ready now we've been at yenz for about six months and around the fifth month I felt like the cast was ready to be on stage. Ideally, we should have been rehearsing on this stage for a month, but the system and industry is different here. Well, now certain things are going to make a lot more sense because before we're like picking perfume bottles out of the air, um, walking around imaginary tables, um, the staircase for like some of the other cast people. So like for me, it's it's almost like reworking the blocking without changing the blocking. Because now there's a whole new dynamic of all these things on stage. So it's exciting at the same time, because now it feels like I'm in the shop. I'm not at the National Theatre, which is, which is nice. We don't have spaces right now that are solely dedicated to artists thriving and, and getting the full feeling of tech week rehearsals and then into the show. We're constantly having to share spaces with other groups that sometimes don't even have anything to do with the arts. There we have issues with double booking, we have issues with people not understanding what comprises of a theater production going into production. 
and it looks simple. We make it look simple, but that's because there are teams with sleepless nights. This week, the stagehands have not been sleeping. We've been going home at 6 a.m. in the morning just to make sure we have transitions, right? Now, when you're working in a space that doesn't accommodate that, it becomes very challenging and you get an extremely tired cast and an extremely tired um, crew, which shouldn't be how it is. That The tiredness shouldn't be because of scheduling. It should be because you've just worked so hard. So, man, Fan Factory has a show tonight. So, to you know Furuma? I've been together before me, I've been here tonight. I've been here with you. Like at around 11 p.m. Then we put up our own stage. Call time tomorrow is supposed to be literally like 7.30. Actors are going to be here earlier. Ubi, by the way, 7.30 tomorrow. So I, I hope that Yenze can be the first to maybe bring an arts facility to Kampala that supports the artists right through their rehearsal process to the production in giving them enough time, enough space, enough resources without interruption. How we're prepared? Maximum. I have a minute. For the other scene changes, I have 20 seconds, 10 seconds. There is a scene change that goes for four seconds. So we have everyone assigned to a different prop for every scene. So they know what they're taking on, they know what they're taking off. They know at what time they're taking it on and what time they're taking it off. We have PDF documents uh, on which they can refer to. We have information pinned on the notes board uh, that gives them a highlight of where they are, where, where they're going. You know, they give them a clue about the show. Yes, they do not have the scripts themselves, but at least they have a picture, they have a hint of what's going on on stage and when it's going on on stage. So we are here on the opening night, the opening day on 19th July of the She Loves Me Day. And oh my word, I thought I was going to feel nervous and like, oh my gosh, let's do this, but I'm very calm and I don't know if that's a good thing. It's, I'm so thrilled to be here. When they were setting up the black carpet outside last night, it just knocked it in that it's either, you have to do this, you can't go home, you, you can't quit now. And yeah, the cast is ready and they're rested. The crew is not so rested. <laughs> we're putting up final touches, gluing the perfumes, tying up the curtain. Uh, my role has really been to um, sign, <coughs> sign contracts, get service providers to do what they are doing, what they are supposed to do, um, follow up with them. Even right now, I'm following up with the service provider. Uh, then uh, making sure that every department has whatever they need and in time so that everything runs so well, making sure that the cast is well taken care of in regard to their health and what they are eating and how they are coping with the environment they're using for rehearsals. For some reason, I have not yet gotten into the panic of the opening night, but I am attributing that to the team I am working with because I think my team, I don't think I know, my team has been very supportive. The team I'm working with has been very supportive. If something is not working in another department, we shall all put our energies there so that everything is done. And then we shall make sure we are all moving at the same pace. So I think that's the reason as to why I haven't gotten any panics yet. I think, I think everything is going well so far. The service providers, aside from one, <laughs> are delivering. There are some who have delivered. We are set for our first run before the actual show. And right now the cast is having, is having their warm-ups, their vocal warm-ups. So I think, I think the opening night is going to be successful. I know it's going to be successful. Yo, warm-ups are king in, in theatre. It would be... It's almost like sending your car to the road without fuel or without oiling the engine and stuff and going for a long journey up country. It's, 
you need to warm up the machine and we underestimate how much our body our voice needs to warm up our body needs to warm up even just mentally getting into this space there's so much influencing us as human beings you don't know what has happened in someone's home whether they fought with their loved one or not whether they had a, a car accident along the way or someone fired them the landlord is asking for their money so the warm up is sort of like this purging of everything that's on the outside so that you can focus on what we have to do the task when the audience comes they're not looking at you and your problems they're looking at a character Ex uh, you guys are going to have such a good experience a very very good experience i know people are looking at my god the fee brother brother you guys are going to even add us you're going to tip us. Be like, you know, they don't tip in theater, but this is going to be, I think, one of those experiences where people will get to tip theater practitioners because of uh, the, the service that we're going to render to them, the experience that we're going to serve them. I think they need to buckle up. You know, what next after She Loves Me is a month of sleep because these bags won't go on their own. <laughs> the lights guy is laughing at me. 